Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da Habatifillah, a question was asked Assalamu alaikum, I need advice on how to pass this test that Allah has put me through I'm a teenager who lives in a Muslim country uh, I was saved from jahiliyyah, I have serious intentions to seek knowledge I am forced to go to a free mixed school as there are no segregated institutions in my city I am tempted and due to my sin my heart gets very hard and I can feel it. It makes me vulnerable towards doubts that are surrounding me and many other bad consequences such as a huge change in akhlaq. I have reached the level of not being bad for my of not feeling bad for my sins, but I have certainly uh, I fear the next level would be not to care and not to repent and then eventually misguidance. I try to lower my gaze, but I end up falling, uh, end up failing most of the times. What made me believe that this is a test is that there is a segregated school in another city and that it's impossible for me to finish high school studies in a free mix environment without getting misguided, as I saw many people who were in a similar situation. And they ended up being completely deviated from Islam. My family would completely be against me if I try to save myself because of their thoughts that I am extreme, can you advise me? Jazakallah khairam. <clears throat> First and foremost, uh, this is a test that many of us uh, experience, but especially the youth. And it goes to show that even in Muslim countries, you have a lot of the same pitfalls and challenges that we experience in the West. And that's increasingly so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem after a'udhu billah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim tabarak al-ladhi bi yadihi al-mulk wa ala kulli shayin qadir al-ladhi khalaq al-mawt wa al-hayat li yablukum ayyukum ahsanu amala wa huwa al-azizu ghafur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem blessed be he in whose hand is the dominion and he is able to do all things. He who has created death and life that he may test you which to see which of you is best indeed. And he is the almighty, the oft forgiving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he created us in trial to experience trials and, and, and tests. And these tests are to discern who is from Ahli Iman and who is not. Or who is from who has weak Iman and whose Iman is strong. So all of those things will be distinguished and discerned and ascertained through tests. So we're all tested. And with that being the case, <clears throat> The, the Mufassirin, and I believe it's a, a Atharan ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, in which he mentioned that the, uh, the, the, the ones who are tested to see ayyuhum ahsanu amala, to see which deed, which is best in deeds, he said something to the effect of akhlasa wa aswaba. Meaning, those who are most sincere, which are the two conditions for having our deeds accepted, those who are the most sincere, and the most correct in deed. And further, he went on to explain <clears throat> this akhlasa wa aswaba, the akhlasa meaning sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever deeds, whatever act of ibadah you're doing, do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And avoiding his prohibitions for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avoiding the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his sake. For his sake. Controlling your desires for his sake subhanahu wa ta'ala. And aswaba. What does it mean the most correct? Al aswaba is the one yusiba sunnah. It's the one who 
whose deeds are in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, regarding your situation, bi-idnillah ta'ala, you mentioned that in another city that there is uh, a segregated school, one in which it's not mixed, no free mixing, and you're a high school youngster. Of course, this is going to be big fitna. So if you have any way and means to be able to go to that other school, then of course I would suggest that you do so. But if in reality that it's not possible, maybe financially, maybe you cannot move to the other city and you're obviously your family's against that and they already think you're extreme, then this is advice for myself and all my brothers and sisters because a lot of people complain about their weak iman. <clears throat> but as men, we need to man up. And as women, we need to be the women need to be strong in Iman too. That sometimes you don't have, you're being pushed and there's no idea situation. But you have to take the high road because you are the believer, bi-idnillah ta'ala. You are the Muslim. And this is what should distinguish you from the people of kufr and nifaq and hypocr hypocrisy and fujur and sinfulness and wickedness that you have to put in your mind that you are going to be dedicated to to fighting the sins going at war with the sins what do i mean by going at war and fighting the sins i mean fighting yourself your nefs that you're going to have to <clears throat> do your best to continue to lower your gaze to the best of your ability as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, fear Allah as much as you can. And you're going to have to be serious about that. And you're going to have to reprimand yourself when you see yourself getting weak. And you're outside of school, you need to be, and in school if possible, be around ahl khair, be around good companions. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Amar, uh, amar yala, Dina Khalilihi, that a person is on the religion of his companion. So if you hang around with people who are weak, and you hang around with people who are uh, fusak, who are wicked, you know, open sinning, they smoke weed, they drink, they commit zina, they have girlfriends, they do this, they do this, then more than likely you're going to be on what they're upon. So you need to begin to remove yourself from those kind of environments and place yourself in an environment of khayr. And I know, as you mentioned, the Muslim country that you're from, which I did not mention, but we know that there's a lot of, I've met a lot of students of knowledge from there. And for sure, there's scholars there as well. So you need to, if any way in your locality, as a young man, sit in some halaqat to help you. Because that helps to balance the sinful gatherings or, you know, being in the mixed environment and the tests that you experience there. That is going to help offset it. It's going to help build your Iman. It's going to help you be more inclined and you can start doing that Talib al-Ilm now. You can start seeking knowledge now. So you've got to take control of the situation. And I will give you an example that without going into details, but when I was a new Muslim and a lot of my companions, for me, staying, Islam, staying a Muslim, a lot of it came, it came from always wanting relationships, a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, I believed in the Salat. So even if I was doing such and such, and such and such, and I was still DJing, and my dreads were on my shoulders, and I was doing this and I was doing this, I always made time for Salat. So I DJed after, just to give you an example. Uh, so yes, there's a janib of sin, and we're not telling you, inviting you to sin, but we're telling you that it's a growing process. That the reality is, is it's a growing process. And you have to fight. But there came a time when I told myself, I said, man, if I'm going to remain Muslim, I need to be serious about this. This thing is real. I'm going to stop such and such. Or I'm going to get away from such and such. Okay? So it's making that conscious decision and we say mash on it. You know, be, be strong. And go forward. So this is my advice. Is also speaking to your parents. 
with kindness and telling them the situation, say, I'm not being extreme, but would you be happy with me having a girlfriend and then her having a child out of wedlock? You know, present it to them like that in the kind and gentle way if you're able to do that. But show them that there is the mofacid in that situation and work with them to try to convince them to help you to be in a segregated environment. And if you don't have that luxury, so to speak, then you've got to be strong in your environment and you've got to put strength around you. You've got to do Talib al-Ilm. Talib al-Ilm helps you. Talib al-Ilm had a sabil al-Jannah. It's a path to Jannah, as the Salaf used to say. Talib al-Ilm, Talib al-Jannah. The seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. If you're doing it with the ikhlas, if you're doing it with sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strengthening yourself, and you're seeking knowledge with uh, those of Ahl sunnah those who are going to help remind you of Allah, قال الله قال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم and help you attain علم النافع. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, من سلك طريقا يلتمسه به علم سحل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة. Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah Allah will make easy for him the path to Jannah. So it's very important to do that طلب العلم and that طلب العلم component and use that to help you through your tests. Through your trials and tribulations, you're gonna get weak. We all get weak. Iman fluctuates. Al Iman, Al Iman, Yazdad bi Ta'a, wa Yanqus bi Maasiyah. That Iman, faith, it increases with obedience to Allah, and it decreases with disobedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So put your environment, do your best to surround yourself with an environment of obedience. And read the Quran and increase your ibadah and increase your dua that Allah makes gives you the strength. And then when you're ready to go take the step and be able to and to have the means to get married. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan.